Hey there, John Morris here, johnmorrisonline.com, and welcome to another episode of The John Morris Show. In this episode, I'm actually going to change things up a little bit, and I'm going to address a comment or an issue that I've seen, and uh, it's, it's something that is in response to a specific comment that I received, but it's also something that I see crop up quite a bit, and I wanted to address it and hopefully put this to rest for good, although I have a hunch that maybe that's not going to be the case. So this uh, is a response to a comment I received on one of my articles over on LinkedIn. Now, if you want to see the article and the comment, you can head on over to LinkedIn slash in slash John Morris online. And I'll take you to my profile. And then the article that you'll see there on my profile is called five pages every web designer should have on their website. And one of the comments that I received on that article went like this. It said, web designers are boneheads, usually self-taught. You're either a real programmer or you're not, and most are not. And then I had kind of followed up saying that essentially I didn't know, didn't think that being school taught necessarily meant that you were always the best coder. And the response I got was, not when you have a C, a real CS degree from an accredited engineering school. It's a filter that works every time. All right, so I want to address this and give my thoughts on this, because I think there's a lot of people out there who probably think this way, or at the very least, a lot of you may be concerned that there are a lot of people out there that think this way. And so I want to address this. Now, before I dive into my response to this, I want to make sure that I let you know that I have released two of my online courses, Responsive Web Design 101 and PHP and my SQL 101 over on BitTorrent. So if you are interested in those two programs or those two topics, I suggest heading over there to check those out. You can find the links to those courses and all the courses that I have available over on johnmorrisonline.com slash training. So there's a lot of training over there on that uh, on that page for you to find and go through. And you can also check out those two courses that I've released on BitTorrent. So again, that's johnmorrisonline.com slash training. All right, so let me dive into this question. So I want to start by articulating the case for having a degree because there's a lot of people out there that believe this and articulate this. And so I want to walk through what what it is that people are really saying. So some of the reasons why people think having a degree is important uh, are one it makes you a better programmer so there's a lot of different ways in which people state this but essentially it's that you're going to in college you're going to learn not only just the how to technical of how to write uh, code but you're going to learn other things you know like unit testing you're going to learn things about designing databases, you're going to learn all sorts of things that you may or may not use, but they are going to get you to think more and more like a programmer and overall make you a better programmer. So that's one of the first arguments. Another one is that you're going to make more money. So this often is in reference to just degrees in general. People that have degrees tend to make more money than people that don't. Uh, And so The argument then follows that if you get your computer science degree that you'll likely make more money than someone who doesn't get their degree. And of course, I'm not going to argue that that's not necessarily true. Uh, The other thing is that big companies like Google and Facebook and all these big tech companies hire degreed programmers over other programmers, the uh, programmers that are not degreed. And then, of course, one of the big ones is that having that degree gives you a certain level of prestige. And when you talk with other developers or maybe go to a conference or even in the interview process, you're going to have a little bit more clout than someone who may or may not have a degree. And so those are all good arguments. Uh, I'm not necessarily going to argue with any of those things. And there are plenty of well-known developers out there who have degrees. So, for example, Sergey Brin, one of the co-founders of Google, uh, has his degree Uh, Tim Bray, who was one of the original co-authors of XML, has his degree. Uh, Alexei Pashitnov, who was the uh, creator of Tetris, has his degree. Paul Boucher, who was the creator and lead developer of Gmail, has his. 
and Max Levkin, who was a co-founder and a former CTO of PayPal and was involved with Slide and on the board of Yahoo and a number of things, has his degree as well. So if you're making the argument that you need to have a degree in order to be a real coder, you would have some decent arguments and you would have some facts in, to back you up and say that, look, you know, look at all these people who have degrees that, you know, have done all these great and wonderful things and that in order to, you know, do those same things, you need to go and get your degree. But there's a problem with that. <laughs> and the, we can start off with looking at the problem by uh, addressing what we just looked at on the other side, which is people who've had success without their degrees. Uh, and specifically developers who've had success without their degrees. So, uh, again, I can run through a list of these. Bill Gates, uh, I think we all know who Bill Gates is, uh, co-founder of Microsoft, and one of the largest tech companies in the world for many years. Uh, I don't know exactly where they stand now, but obviously Microsoft is still a big player. Uh, he dropped out of Harvard. Uh, probably the one that most people know is Mark Zuckerberg, who dropped out of Harvard his sophomore year in order to pursue Facebook. Uh, Steve Jobs dropped out of Reed College after six months. Steve Wozniak dropped out of Cal. Michael Dell, founder, co-founder or founder of Dell, dropped out was a dropout at Texas. Kevin Rose uh, was a dropout at UNLV while pursuing his computer science degree. Larry Ellison, who's the inventor of Oracle, dropped out of Illinois Urbana, uh, or Illinois Urbana Champaign, and later the Chicago University of Chicago dropped out of both. David Karp, who invented Tubler, dropped out of high school at 14. <laughs> uh, so he didn't even finish high school, let alone college. And Jack Dorsey, who created or helped found Twitter. Dropped out of New York, New York University after transferring from the Missouri University of Science and Tech. So while we can point to a lot of people who've had success who have degrees, we can also point to a lot of people who've had success without degrees. So then you start to wonder, well, does having a is having a degree the determining factor? And when you look at the names of the people who have succeeded with them and who have succeeded without them, there's really no significant advantage to the people that have the degrees. There, in fact, in some ways, uh, the people without degrees represent Microsoft, Facebook, Apple, Dell, Oracle, Twitter, some of the bigger tech companies and tech applications and so forth that exist today were founded, created, etc., by people who didn't have degrees. So it, it it kind of starts to allude to the fact that maybe the degree isn't the determining factor. So when you start to look at that, then you can see that, uh, and you start to look deeper, you can see that there are some problems with degrees, okay? So one of the biggest problems with getting a, uh, using college and pursuing a degree as your way of learning how to code, how to be a developer, is that colleges, it's notoriously difficult for colleges to keep their curriculum current. And that's simply because there's a lot more approval processes and steps that they have to go through in order to teach that curriculum uh, and get it approved. And so by the time they do that, with as fast as the web uh, and computer technology and so forth is advancing, oftentimes by the time they teach what they're teaching, it's outdated. So, uh, you, again, that, that's not to say that you're not going to learn some general things as being a developer. But if you're going to learn a very specific language or uh, a piece of the entire kind of computer science curriculum that you could learn, most often what you're learning is going to be out of date. And so when you get done with your degree, you're going to have to catch yourself up. The other thing is, is that oftentimes it doesn't teach you everything that you need to know to code, okay? I've met plenty of people who have their degrees who don't know how to code. It doesn't guarantee any of that. And then when you consider that in light of the cost and how much it costs to pursue that kind of degree and how much debt you'll have coming out of it, 
then it starts to make sense why people might be considering other routes. Now, I want to make sure that I'm clear on one thing with this because this is oftentimes the people who support you getting your degree. They use this trick to uh, kind of try and position you as a bad person. And so what they say is that they, they equate your, a degree with education and as if the, the two are exactly the same thing. But having a degree does not automatically equate to education. And education does not automatically equate to the need to pursue a degree. So again, too many people conflate having a degree with having an education and attack those with degrees, uh, attack those people who don't have degrees as not having an education or saying those uh, or attack those who say you don't need a degree as saying you don't need an education. So let me state unequivocally my position. You need to be educated. That Of that, there's no question. But college isn't always the best way to get that education. Okay, so to me, what a real, real developer is, is someone who knows what they're doing in their particular field or for the particular project that they happen to be working on. Now, does that require a degree? Absolutely not. But can a degree help you get there? Well, yeah, definitely it could do that. So if you're thinking of pursuing a computer science degree or any other degree, and you think that's the best way for you to get the education that you need, then you should absolutely do it. But just because you don't doesn't mean that you are not a real developer, quote unquote. So in my opinion, to say that the only real developers are the ones with degrees is not only false, it's narrow minded and likely self aggrandizing. All right, so that'll do it for this episode of the show. If you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe. And if you like this episode, then be sure to hit the like button so I know that this is the kind of content that you're after. Also, if you'd like to ask me a question, you can head on over to Cora.com slash John Morris 67 and invite me to answer your question over there or tweet me at JP Morris using the hashtag JMO I want to know. And last but not least, if you haven't yet, head on over to JohnMorrisOnline.com and download my free cheat sheet, Seven Strategies to Turn Your Code into Cash. Thanks for listening. I'll talk to you next time.